faces off the streets Rainfall washes away the memories in binary Salvation bathes us in its glow We look up to the sky
Hello, good evening, and welcome everyone back to the Overwatch All-Star Brawl 2nd Edition presented by Star Esports, a double elimination tournament favoring, featuring, and presenting the Overwatch Tier 3 community. Tonight, we're going to be looking at the Loser's Bracket matchup, Solstice versus NYX Nyx, and I'm joined, of course, by Sir Waltham. Sir Waltham, my buddy. My buddy, we're so excited, oh. but you. <laughs> <laughs> I got too excited, I forgot to unmute myself. My mistake happens all the time. Uh, you, should, you should ask my teammates. They, they always hear me on mute. But that being said, glad to be here watching Nyx and Solstice going head to head here. Uh, these teams first week of this tournament didn't really have that much success. So I'm looking forward to seeing uh, them kind of go up against one another. See how these teams really kind of measure against very similar calibers. Yeah, they both teams went up against some pretty serious talent, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, in particular, Aptics Esports, uh, a, a, a brand that has been in the Overwatch, uh, in the Star Esports communities now for quite some time. We've seen what they can do to a team. It's pretty disgusting. Yeah. So seeing what Solstice and Nyx can now bring to the table now that they have potentially a more even playing field. And maybe, you know, they came into this tournament quite possibly not expecting how serious the teams were going to take it. Who can say? But we are going to be able to see what they're going to bring tonight. We are, in uh, fact, going to be getting started on Nepal. Well, from what do we think about Nepal? Oh, Nepal is a good map. And I say that because I think we've seen one of my favorite heroes come out quite often, and that is Farah. And, you know, Farah is not exactly the least comfortable hero on certain submaps of Nepal. She can play pretty well. I mean, there's a lot of areas where you could say, oh, well, it's covered, it's indoors. But if that far is able to have their team take point first, they could rain down on a lot of angles with a very open skybox. And it is kind of hard to aim when the, there's a lot of tall geometry and sharp angles. And especially since you do have that roofing style area on two of the three maps, at least, I, it makes it so much harder to be on point and still pressure that far. So I'm looking forward to seeing that come forward. 100% agreement. There's a lot of ways that you can play Nepal these days. The Reaper May, the Black Ice as you might want to call it, has not been as prevalent in this double barriers 2-2-2 two, two, two roll lock patch slash meta that we find ourselves in, but Farah has actually seen a surprising amount of use here where you get to the situation of finding those angles is not only a defensive measure now it's a offensive measure the barrier from arisa gets placed quite statically where a sigma can of course fling his out at will curious whether that'll get patched at some point in time but eventually now we're seeing players far it up and just have a really good time sliding around those barriers raining down some serious justice and that's not even to mention the sick barrages yeah absolutely so as far as dps players go because i feel like sigma orissa gonna kind of be a staple here as we move forward through these games um at least it, that's historically what we've been seeing um i think that farah doomfist and maybe a little bit of reaper those are pretty much the bread and butter of what we've been seeing at, at least from personal experience in the t3 in the tier 3 scene um and even a little bit higher than that as we start to look at uh, perhaps a little bit more overwatch style gameplay a lot of doomfist a lot of that high impact can kind of just avoid the shields of sigma and orissa ironically despite it being a double barrier meta that is something that I'm looking forward to either of these teams bringing out here. And it's actually kind of one of those counter pick situations. If a team has an excellent Doomfist, I think we're going to see that being played. If one team brings it out and another doesn't, that can lead to a little bit of the Rothwell stomping action going on. The same can also be said for that Farah pick. And honestly, sometimes for the Reaper pick. If you don't have anything that can deal with that Reaper coming into your backline, uh, that's a big problem. And a team can really get honestly crippled right from the get-go they can't even win a team fight they're never going in with five with all six of their team members but for now it looks like we're getting started on one of those more open nepal maps that actually might favor some of that far play yeah absolutely going to be looking forward to that going to be looking to see some huge plays coming perhaps from out of the sky but speaking of big plays don't forget folks that our twitch mvp vote is now live in the lobby so be sure and throw a vote down in the bottom right let us know who you think is pop you don't necessarily have to throw it in the first map we got time we got plenty of time we know we're gonna at least have three games here first to three as it is that being said three any predictions when we have 10 seconds i'm definitely going to be going with farah on this one and i'm thinking it's going to be the 100 percent lock-in it's sigma orisa it's going to be the farah farmer c i would assume and that leaves me with two more picks 
at oh jeez look at what you did to me <laughs> look at what you did to me waltham come on <laughs> and as you might be able to hear through threep's frustration not going to be seeing any far as at least quite yet getting out onto the point we're going to be seeing a little bit of doom fist however and majink interestingly enough going to be at least starting off on the hamster no we'll see the switch onto the orissa as as you might expect in this meta all right, now it's valid and recycled that I'm extremely looking forward to. If they leave with the Brigadian Soldier, that's fascinating. If they switch, not a, a not unexpected at all in the slightest. It looks like the... Come on, there. Okay, valid and it's going to be a Lucio. So Lucio-Moira, popular healing combo we see coming in here. Yeah, very interesting. Paz was actually on the Lucio, used a little bit of the speed boost, and then as soon as they swapped, Valid hopped on just to get that extra speed boost going. I like that. I like that strategy. And the fight has gotten in in big way. Anhuman and Polar are going nuts on the Doomfist. Rake getting halfway low, but he's not looking very... He is going to get out of there alive. And honestly, it's the very, very early showing on the point from Solstice, who, using their tanks, take the space necessary. They're going to go for the first... Uh, or rather, the first possession without any blood spilt at all. Yeah, I think tea time on this McCree is mainly in the event that the side of Solstice was going to run Afara. Not going to be the case, but tea time still building up quite a bit of ult charge. Ah, and there it is. So the Moira is going to get the Coalescence first, and they're firing their lasers right away. Polar finds out red, so that's done and done. And now there's even a Sigma ult coming out. <laughs> Unbelievable. And wow, Nyx is turning his fight around very quickly. Well usable cooldowns as the Moira lasers having finished up, and the tea time McCree is getting a lot of use on that Doomfist. Yeah, absolutely. That's one thing you have to really be careful about as you play a Doomfist against a McCree. If that flashbang hits you, you're a sitting target, and Doomfist does not have the smallest hitbox. For that, tea time's going to be rewarded with a high noon, and Hooman also to match with the Meteor Strike. And right now, not a lot of defensive ults on the side of Solstice to match. And it's another thing that's super interesting about these particular compositions you see going in here. Moira has free reign to throw her orbs, and as we see, she generates so much ult charge and percentage, and Solstice start the fight off in a huge way. Bronze Mercy dropping the big stuff in. Another popular combo, the seismic Doomfist ult comes right on top. Solstice reasserting dominance on the point, despite on Human and Tea Time's best efforts. Yeah, tea time trying to get the flashbang onto the Reaper, stun him out, try to get the couple headshots, just does not land, gets cleaned up because of that. And right now it's a little bit of a scrim as just the remainders of the side of Nyx just hangs in there. The reinforcements are going to come in though. These are fantastic plays coming out from Nyx. Stalls, I should say. One by one, they march onto the point using all abilities as necessary. They even pick up a kill. Bronze Mercy going down to Anhuman, who does get immediately outfisted, so to speak. And that is going to be Nyx's signal to just continue streaming in here. Tea time again goes down, but that's still the only kill we've seen. And all the while, they're building up percentage. Yeah, absolutely. Even if you're losing this fight as Nyx, you're going to be getting some value out of it just on the mere fact that the timer is still ticking in your favor. And now it's not even looking that great for the side of Solstice. They're losing members. They don't have a whole lot of staying powers. That Doomfist needs to stay a little bit mobile to do his abilities. The ground and pounds coming off from Anhuman have been absolutely fantastic, but Recycled's re re Reaper, that is, is finally getting some usage. Polar also, again, throwing out the slams themselves. Another Sigma ult comes out from, yes, 360. You can't get me to say that tag. And that's a Death Blossom completely eaten by that Sigma, who, despite those shields, goes down pretty quick. Yeah, not going to be too bad for the side of Solstice, but they really need to make something happen. This has just been one long fight that has been going what feels like eternally right now. And we're seeing a little bit of stall come out from out red. But right now, it's all good. They can feel good about letting go of the point. And as long as they re-get it, as long as they regain it just once, they'll still be able to come away with a win on this submap. We're seeing EMF on that ham, and they might just be trying to buy a little bit of stall and ult charge here. The commitment to this fight is unbelievable. It's been going on now for about two minutes, and neither team is showing any sign of backing down at any point in time, though for Solstice, this is definitely do or die. Nyx continues to make a solid play for it, and they actually push Solstice off just long enough to grab that first point. Yeah, absolutely. That fight was a lot like a Willy Wonka song. There's no way of knowing which way you're going, but you know it's not going to be pleasant when you're riding on that boat. Either way, we're going to be seeing it. Nick's taking first point, and man, that was such a long fight. It, it really just felt like it was two team fights, but the second one just <laughs> drug on for minutes, Threep. Yeah, now that we've seen how these two teams are willing to slug it out, or rather specifically, we've seen what Nick's Nyx's strategy on that point was frankly 
perfect. If you have possession of the point, you can continuously send in people to the contest, and you're just going to gain percentage. You know it's you it probably will flip. In this case, it didn't. They did everything they needed to, and they actually got the picks to stay in. Yeah, absolutely. And tea time being a McCree, I think was a little bit more instrumental there than it might have appeared on the kill feed. Knowing that that McCree has the flashbang makes the Doomfist a little bit wary to dive, especially if the McCree is sticking on to his supports. So some real good play there. Does not look like they'll be going with it this time around, though. Not at all, and there they go, the Doomfist going in. Neither one going to be able to get any kills from their initial salvos. And for a Doomfist that is clutch, you have to retreat behind the safety or barriers. Now it's time for the Reapers to get duty done, and tea time has brought the Crumpets, and it is bam, bam, and shotguns for days. Nyx once again asserting, this time rather, early dominance on the point. Yeah, I got to be a little bit of stall from Paz. Not going to be worth it in the end, or not going to be effective in the end. Paz, however, leading a little bit in the Moira ult charge game here although you might expect that when your team's taking more damage leading to their inevitable deaths but and human <laughs> by and far much far much closer to that meteor strike than the side of polar might have it up in the mid fight don't know if that would necessarily be a tool they'll use once they're that committed but we're gonna have to see here as the fight breaks out yeah the dueling warriors are gonna be coming out and here it is both unleash the Fire and Malaysia's ultimate. Neither one gonna be able to get a lot of kills, but it is gonna cause a lot of problems. And Majink is the one gonna find the kill onto Arisa. Valid gets traded rather, and that is still very good for Solstice. Polar finds tea time. Wrapping it up here on the point is what I would like to say as Nyx immediately counters. Yeah, wow, Nyx pulling it in once again. We thought it was gonna be over. Was not quite the case. Majink gonna be dying on point without the opportunity to even get the flip. And Right now, it's not looking too bad for the side of Nyx. This is one of those teams we talk about where you cannot leave anybody up or they will just stall and potentially retake or win the fight outright. You don't want to let that happen. This team's putting their foot down early on. I am definitely loving the tenacity here. They went into, they actually started that fight off in a very nasty position, losing their main tank quite quickly. Now let's see how they start this fight. Now it's a 6v6. The Aresis Fortifications comes out. The big Sigma ult is in from Bronze Mercy, and down they come into the sound barriers, keeping everyone up. As tea time, again, the Crumpets, it's Muffins, and despite getting some kills, yes, Nyx maintaining a numerical advantage despite some clapback from Solstice. Yeah, and out red having to save that Lucio sound barrier just for the Sigma ult. As soon as we see Bronze Mercy throw it out, out red replies. Then because of that, a lot of their members remain standing and able to push because they have that huge amount of health. T time able to push in real aggressive with that Reaper, and we're gonna be seeing it continue to move forward. Yeah, and unfortunately for the Hammond there, unable to get back to the point. Nyx takes round one, and we're gonna be going back to some hardcore map selection time but before we get started let's take care of some paperwork here people if you're liking what you're seeing don't forget to throw us a follow and maybe a subscribe because it's half sub september half off all subs and as a reminder though if you'd love to hang out and twitch chat with us and also if you're a subscriber flex some of those crazy awesome uh, emotes this is now going to revert to a followers only chat so you know join the club throw us the hearts because we know we love bringing the content to you and we'd love to hear the same yeah, absolutely. And, you know, what other way are you going to be able to tell me and Threep that we're wrong, that we are just absolute garbage people who get you baited at every map, other than, than you know, being able to be in chat? You got to do it if you want to If you want to BM the casters. I'm willing to put myself out there for a follow. That ain't no problem at all. <laughs> yep, exactly. And honestly, you know, what the more you ask it for? You come here, you get awesome Willy Wonka references from Waltham. Like, come on. <laughs> on fire so let's get started let's talk about how it works down under here so this actually isn't a tournament hosted in australia by the way the ping would be way too <laughs> regardless it's now map ban time so as the winner of the previous round nix is going to ban a map and wow that was fast and hanamura is immediately ruled out yeah and you know i'm kind of liking that a little bit now i mean granted i'm gonna bring it up every time horizon lunar colony not in the map pool so not gonna be an option here <laughs> but Hanamura has taken the <laughs> assault map every time instead of Horizon Lunar Colony that has been on the board. So I'm glad to see Hanamura just stricken down immediately. We also won't be seeing any more control maps because they don't play map types back to back, meaning no more King of the Hill style for the time being. Probably a little bit of breath of fresh air for Solstice as, man, they had a tough time trying to get onto point with Nyx. Yeah, Nyx has been doing a fantastic job of staking their territorial claim very early on, marking it, as you will, in a, as destructive a manner as possible. And yes, Solstice, or rather, maybe, 
Solstice is in fact going to select Anubis, uh, at possibly taking the bait from Nyx's assault type ban. Difficult to say. We're also going to be seeing a sub. Nyx is going to take out Anhuman, the Doomfist Supreme, and they're going to be subbing in Cruz. Now, looking at what Cruz has to offer to the team, I would guesstimate that we might be seeing some barrier busting. Yeah, absolutely. But, you know, if we're going to go on to Anubis, I always have to talk first point about the potential for a Widowmaker. You know, you talk about uh, Farah, you talk about Doomfist and Reaper. None of them, if they're playing on, you know, at, at a similar skill level, really do that effectively against a Widowmaker. Widowmaker has a lot of high ground she can take here in Anubis. I'm curious to see if the teams try to utilize that or take it to their advantage, or if perhaps things uh, mix up a little bit here and we start to see, you know, just the, the Reaper Doomfist kind of go head to head. Uh, there's, I, I have yet to say, uh, I think, you know, while we're talking about choices that may kind of come from downtown, we have not seen any sim quite yet to reap, and I'm hoping we're going to get to see some tonight. I think that's just going to shake down to if the teams have practiced it or not. I think you're 100% correct. Also, don't forget that Cruz is rocking not only some proficiency on the Symmetra, looks like they've been favoring the Widowmaker just a mm. tad recently. So if uh, Waltham is correct, and boy does my boy know it, I think Cruz was subbed in here with a very specific role in mind on this Anubis map. Now, we are going to be getting started. As a reminder, we have switched sides. Solstice is good. No, we haven't. Nope, I lied. Lied, 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 lied. Uh, no, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, no. <laughs> what happened? Oh, the team names. No. It will oh. be Nyx on the defending side <laughs> to start. So don't get confused by that too quickly there, folks. As we have about five seconds to count down or till we see the team spawns, as we see the spawns open up, <laughs> it looks like the side of Nyx might be rolling with a little bit of ash play. And I like it. I like the dynamite. I like the lever action rifle. It's a good, it's a good pick. We've actually, so in recent games that we've been seeing in Temple of Anubis, Junkrat as a pick here on Anubis is back in style. Uh, teams tend to have one of three options really here to come through this choke point. You either go right down the middle and get shelled. You either go into the tiny room here and get shelled, or you go into the left room here and get shelled. So Junkrat, fantastic pick. I'm also loving the Ana. Ana and Moira again as healers, super deadly now that there's no D.Va in play. And this offense coming out now from Solstice, Oh, I saw the far ever cycled. I saw it. Yeah, just just a little bit, just just for a moment. But that being said, worth noting, Outred going to be on this mercy, giving the defense a little bit more staying power. And you know, when we look at the attacking side, not a whole lot of changes up here. It's going to be Solstice running with the standard uh, Ori uh, Sigma and the Doom Reaper. Yeah, we gotta figure out a good name for that one other than Dub Barriers. Anyways, the Junkrat mod <laughs> grenades are already doing their job, and the massive anti also gonna be going, and that's gonna stop that progress just a little. It looks like Polar might be looking for his big opportunity to go in, and the halt was it! He goes diving into the line, gets anti-nated immediately! And the defense from Nyx is in full swing, as Solstice now has to attempt a... Uh, well, now it's a 5v5 attempt, because Recycled is starting to clean up. Holy moly, Solstice coming alive on Anubis. Yeah, Solstice was not looking good when they lost Polar off to start. And the Junkrat already having Tire, only going to take out Valid, though. That's not the kind of value you need to get with that Junkrat Tire. Worst case scenario, you may have wanted to hold it for that second push, since you might not even continue running that Junkrat. You can just get the ult off real quick, stop any snowball potential that the opposing team might have. But to their credit, Solstice does not exactly have a lot of ults, so I'm not sure Nyx is exactly going to be hurting about that. Yeah, definitely a valid use of that Junkrat cruise, cruising back to spawn, gonna switch onto that May. Another fantastic choice. Speaking of Black Ice not seeing a lot of playtime right now, that's uh, doubly untrue if you're defending a control point for five and a half minutes. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of stall potential coming out here. And Recycle trying to do some sneaky wraparounds, not quite finding anything yet. And the laser beam goes off though when Polar finds Crew so early into the fight. That's a bunch of valuable defensive cooldowns you're not going to have. Not the least of which is your Risa getting obliterated by Recycled, who's probably going to use some of those parts. And oh, the Sigma ult comes out. That's 50% damage, and Nyx might be able to mount a defense here. Yeah, it's looking like a T time though, taking out. Uh, both the crews and out red here. It's not looking good. It's 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 looking pretty solid for the defense. Nyx absolutely mounting the defense, and 
you know, they're not going to be too upset about that. Both teams going to be having a support ult up. Raid having that Moira Coalescence and Valid having that Lucio Sound Barrier. However, we just saw Yes360 use that Graph Flux a little bit earlier. So Valid's just going to have to most likely keep that Sound Barrier in the pocket for a while. Yes, and otherwise they might be able, they might be willing to use it as a pushing tool, uh, but with only a, with a single ult of their own, this might be a good time to go slamming it in there, but Cruz, wow, Cruz takes an early offensive, an early sortie out from the defensive walls, and he gets taken down immediately. Now that spawn's actually going to be replaced, but Solstice have a chance to take a stand on the point now. Yeah, they just need to be very decisive in this instance, and it looks like that's exactly what they're going for. Solstice trading out is not exactly the situation they want to be in and Valid's Barriers goes down. They try to pop it in the middle of this, the Death Blossom and it gets blitzed away from them thanks to Reaper's dually shotguns of Edgy Doom. Yeah, and right now, Crew is just absolutely filling up the kill feed. Gonna have that Meteor Strike taken down Recycled as a final trophy in their trophy case. And this is still looking pretty good for Nyx despite what was a pretty blazing first point. Now, the side of Solstice looking a little bit uh, stagnant here, not quite performing at the rank they would want to be. That Losing that sound barrier from Valid really hurt, and now they have nothing to answer. Yes, 360's grab flux, as we were talking about a little bit earlier. Did Cruz almost kill everyone? I think he did. And then he did the vent. That definitely makes up for his early uh, feeding kill, as he has just come ripping out here on this Doomfist. And now he goes surging into the back line again. He doesn't get the kill, but now he's able to use his cooldowns to not immediately escape because he has that ultimate to go throwing down. And he throws a big one, gets two! Ooh. Recycled bronze versus he going down. This fight is over, folks. Yeah, absolutely. Cruz finding the exact value you need to find with that Doomfist. I really want to highlight his play here because he waits, right? He doesn't just go head in. He waits for Bronze Mercy to use that accretion rock, knowing that he can't get stunned in the middle of his combo. And that's some really smart play. We saw Bronze Mercy throw that rock. And then as soon as it flew by, Cruz ready to initiate. But speaking of initiations, not going to be so easy for the side of Solstice to initiate as there is quite a bit to stop them. You have the sound barrier, you have the Sigma grab flux, still valid, not able to build up a lot of sound barrier charge for that. And then you have the Moira Coalescence. If you're on the side of Nyx, you're going to be feeling pretty good about stopping the Solstice push for a bit. It's going to be clutch up to Polar to see if they can get an opening kill for this. And wow, the Moira laser beam comes out very early from Paz to start the fight. And there it is! Polar finds the kill on the Dad Please Yes 360. There, you got me to say it. They're also going to take down the Jinx Bongos. Huge source of damage gone. Outred is going to commit the barriers here to the rest of his team members. And that is going to allow them to start ripping into it. But Recycled comes up with a triple kill! Wow. Yeah, that was amazing. Would not have expected the Reaper to find that much value, but the Grab Flux is going to be coming out again. Nothing to really protect against it. And because of that, everybody is just sitting ducks in midair. And Polar going in right now, probably not the play. I think Cruz was a member of the fighting game community uh, in a previous life or something. His skill with Doomfist is just unbelievable. Still not a tick taken. And the again, Nick's coming back from what seemed to be losing fights is now it's starting to not be incredible. Now I'm almost expecting it. Yeah, you got to feel a little bit bad if you're recycled. That was a massive death blossom. It just came in a little too late after the fight was already like by that three kills. It was just even you don't necessarily want to just even it out. Tea Time going to try to get some value with it as well. Not going to quite succeed, though. <laughs> Tea Time gets nothing, but that certainly opens the door for the rest of his team to actually start affecting a spawn stuff as Solstice are retreating very far back. Nyx may have overextended a little here, but it looks like Polar isn't going to be able to capitalize just yet. Yeah, they're definitely going to realize that they're kind of a, at a little bit of a disadvantage when it comes to the spawns. However, if one of them dies by the time the rest of the team's backed up, they will be at spawn and uh, ready to fight once again. Recycled, taking out tea time in the early, and it looks like they're going to push in on this, but both Reapers down is not great. Dueling laser beams on the point, and the Sigma alts are in favor of everyone except... Tita, or recycled rather, Cruz, but no, now Solstice comes back in a big way. The barriers are in, the ultimates are pulling in the kills, and in the 20 seconds left, there's no way they can finish this without overtime, but as the man advantage continues to build, Solstice might be able to complete Anubis. Yeah, absolutely. Polar just going with those right clicks, trying to punch everything in the face, but this is kind of the Nick syndrome we've been seeing here. They're coming out in phases. And this is kind of really good for them, not getting any kills as they were on the side of Nepal. 
but still they've pushed it into overtime and it certainly didn't have to happen that way emf coming in on the reinhardt gets a pin that's the first kill they needed that's one of the first kills i've seen a reinhardt get in ages from a pin <laughs> in 2018 anyways solstice still hanging in there they've taken their first pick it's official cruz is going to grab magenta though that may not be enough for nyx to finish out this defense solstice may have this locked up yeah, absolutely. And yes, 360 trying so hard to stay on point, just being an absolute bugbear on the side of this team. And another pin coming in from EMF, but Lord. <laughs> EMF really needs to stop this. You're giving me hope that we might be seeing more Reinhardt play in the future. Nick's doing a fantastic job of contesting this point. No one can deny. But after certain points, Solstice, as we've just seen, pushes Nick's away, and they finally complete the map, albeit in overtime. Yeah, it really kind of seemed like... Um... The side of Solstice was just, they had a deck of cards, right? And it, they would pick a card, it would say left or right, and that just happened to be the side <laughs> that the defending team came out on every time because they were pretty responsive. There were a lot of kills that came through for the, well, there were a couple kills, I should say. I shouldn't get too carried away. That came through for the side of Nyx, and they didn't, like, <laughs> Solstice did not crumble despite getting, you know, two or three people just got pinned by the Reinhardt at random. It was... <laughs> It was good despite them losing, you know, a handful of members throughout. It's interesting. You wonder if that might have gone differently should had Nyx, instead of, you know, sending in the trickle like they did on the King of the Hill maps, um, possibly maybe coalescing a bit, no pun intended, or maybe pun intended. I, I forget what the ult charges on those <laughs> players are. I feel like coalescence is more of a cooldown these days than an ultimate ability. Mm. But... If you, if you group up a little, let them get, let, give the first two ticks up. Just let it happen, go in with a fuller team. Given how EMF was able to get those kills, it's possible that the one kill could have been the start of a defensive snowball that keeps Solstice from taking the map, or round rather. We'll never know, because uh, at the very least, that's the way it played out, and Solstice, as you said, did a fantastic job of staying in there. Yeah, absolutely, and now it will be on to Nyx to get this push going. They're going to have to retort. They're going to have to get a, hopefully, a better time than the side of Solstice. These names are getting me all sorts of confused right now, 3, but I'm having a real tough time. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. The Solstice is upon us as <laughs> Nyx is now, however, going to be taking the phrase. Cruz almost made my day coming out there on the Widowmaker. It's not going to happen. Instead, going for the usual mirror compositions that both people are enjoying, and they're going to take the right side. They're going to lock themselves in that little room, but no Junkrat this time around to rain hell down upon them, and so they are going to find a little bit of purchase, except the all-powerful Cruz gets all-powerful destroyed. Yeah, absolutely, and EMF getting taken down as well. Not a spot you want to be in, aside from the fact that Orisa is one of your main tanks. Uh, having that halt gives you so much combo and damage output potential. If you can combo that halt with something like an accretion, it allows you to have a lot of stun and damage. If you're able to combo it with a Doomfist right click, it can allow you to displace enemies that you don't necessarily want to be all up in your grill. So it, it's a really powerful tool. Losing your Orisa not only loses you the tank, it loses you the CC as well. Yeah, it's a no bueno situation, no indeed. And now Nick's going to be taking a little bit of a detour, going in the left side of the map this time, and they are going to fight in this little corner without the Reaper. Tea time looks like they might be trying a bit of a fight. They do! They come into the back line! They start raining in the shotgun blast, and that is going to split the team. Cruz finds the kill onto Valid, but that please goes down, and yet the other Sigma gets traded. Nick's very strong here as a recycled hides in wait while Polar starts the kills off. Yeah, right now the kills are looking very tradey back and forth, but that's a little bit better for this item next. They do have that respawn advantage, and oh my god, this boy are trying to stay alive, not gonna work. Yeah, unfortunately, they die quite ungloriously. T time taking him out. Cruz and T time also then gonna finish it up, and that's a point take for Nyx. Now, Solstice have a similarly nice and long take as we get a little bit of the delay here. Recycled and Polar actually coming in, trying to stop this point from happening. Yeah, absolutely. If nothing else, they'll be able to walk away with a little bit more ult charge. Both those DPS is now going to be pretty close to having ult. Any snowball potential you thought might be coming out of the side of Nyx. Now going to be a little bit matched by the opposing uh, Solstice team. Yes, both teams have a large quantity of ultimates to go out with, and it's going to be Bronze Mercy started off with their Sigma ultimate. A die, 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 die goes into the back line from Tea Time. Grabs nothing, surprisingly. And now with the barriers, Nyx are committing everything to this fight, and Bronze Mercy's already down pulled follows it's looking very good for nyx yeah it is looking absolutely stellar looks like they're going to maintain this hold this time around and you know i mean not to say that's 
Solstice still has not gotten progress, or excuse me, that Nyx has not gotten progress. They are manhandling this point right now, and it is all of them in the kill feed right now. This is a little brutal. And he, ooh, Recycle comes out of the Tracer. Yes, Cruz goes down. Majinx finds Outred. The retake has begun. Solstice have done exactly what they needed to do. They've waited just long enough to get more people on the point. T-Times finds Majinx, but the spawn's going to be favoring the defense if they can just get a little more. They have a much better shot at holding it, but Nyx is not to be denied. Yeah, and with Polar taking down T-Time, losing those DPS if you're the attacking team can be so critical. That loses your ability to really impose threat on the point. Aside from the tanks, those DPS make it really hard to get in close to the point. And right now, it's just the side of Solstice fighting with everything they have. Yeah, I'm loving this Winston that Majink is getting so much mileage on. Raid pops out their laser beams, however, they grab two real quick. Browns Mercy grabs Cruz, but it's not going to be enough. The Die 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 comes out and it's three and a half minutes on the clock as Nyx are marching towards what looks like a very inevitable take on Anubis. Yeah, and Nyx now in the optimistic spot of only having to take one third on the first point, not even gonna be a chance for Solstice to do anything other than the draw here. And they're gonna be rooting for that, but it's a tall order three. It is a nasty situation to be in. I know my, like if, I, if I'm ever playing this one in ladder, even in quick, uh, well, it can't happen in quickly. In ladder, <laughs> it's just, uh, it's so crushing. It's very difficult to maintain that glorious PMA as you head into this, what mm -hmm. seems to be an insurmountable defense. Has it happened? Absolutely. Is it likely? Absolutely little. So that being said, <laughs> it looks like we're going to be seeing the best come out from Double, the defense on Solstice. It's going to be the composition that they've been running with so well so far. Uh, Cruz on a Symmetra. If it happens, please let it be so. There's no way faster the point than literally instantly teleporting there. Cruz just walking in spawn, going back to the hero selection room and back out before changing off the sim gives me an uncomfortable level of anxiety as I can't decide whether they're actually going to be sticking with this or they're just doing it for the lulls to swap off and the bastion coming out from tea time is suddenly if they stick with this the sims looking a little bit more likely sim lining yes, up at the door i yes, think this is it yes yes they're doing That's it oh, it's the best it. day ever so they're going right to the top they're taking that bastion up to the bridge it's going to be a very difficult situation because the teleporter is going to come under fire immediately they do it they do the problem it, it was amazing the sigma was there and ready to go they have established control of the high ground yeah, and this is just some good team coordination from the side of Nyx. They know that they need to take that high ground, but they have the high ground. Bastion not really seeming to do a whole lot. They're waiting for Cruz to get that teleporter up so they can relocate and pull the same strategy a little bit closer to home. Amazing, though. Polar is ready for it. They must have known exactly what they were going to do. Outred goes down so quickly. Can't res if you're dead yourself. So, oh, but, oh, that's a, not a good trade. The Polar Doomfist is down. One of the best ways to get through those barriers. And now Cruz is starting to charge up like crazy. Doomfist is dead but it's time for uh the light arc is dead. all right so this is a failed push but it was exciting <laughs> yeah recycled really being the linchpin in this fight here taking down that bastion taking down i believe it was the sim you have to get that value as a reaper especially on these defensive holds and the fact that you made outred come back to point just to watch their fellow dps and tanks die that's a benefit you're gonna gain you're gonna get a little bit of mercy uh ult charge and looking at it I mean, you know, ult's not looking bad for either team. Both going to have one support ult up the Moira versus the Baptiste. You got to think with the Bastion, though, the ult favor is going to be going towards Nyx as they have that massive damage window. Yeah, the pain frame is a big deal for a Bastion who is going to probably get to take a heavy advantage of that. The ult, co the halt comes out from a Jink, and that's not going to happen. Recycle, they're going to have to shadow step away here as the impending doom of the, well, now additional Doomfist from Cruz might be a little too much. Nick's actually going to split the party, something that uh, is technically not usually advisable, as Recycled generates even more and more death plasm potential. Yeah, absolutely. Anybody who plays tabletop RPGs will tell you, splitting the party, not the most optimal situation here, and Recycled getting put dangerously low and then stunned, but gonna go in with a death blossom, it seems. Wow. Moira unleashes the barriers, and now the Sigma call to doom comes out. Cause, however, gonna be finding Cruz before that happens. And the aforementioned death blossom from Recycled finally comes out. Lots of kills being traded, but with the death of tea time, it's gonna be pretty difficult for Dad to uh, take this. He goes down. And the pull, the defense that seemed impossible is uh, starting to take it. form. Yeah, absolutely. I saw what they were going for. Tea time trying to get on point and set up while the rest of Nyx were kind of taking that high ground. Normally you think you'd want to leverage your Bastion on that high ground, 
but Bash is going to have that tank form a huge amount of damage. You can even amplify it with Raid's window. Not sure that's the route they're going to be going with, but there you go. The Bash is going to be up in action. It's extremely difficult to use Bastion's tank configuration in the double barriers meta, and as expected, it gets exactly zero kills, and Recycled simply takes out the trash once again. Solstice looking so proficient on this defense, it's difficult to say if this was really Nyx's best option or if they were just trying something funky, because they are out of ultimates. Yeah, that was a huge amount of investment. You invested, you know, your Orisa charge. You invested, well, your Baptiste wasn't really going to matter. You were going to switch on to the Moira anyway. Polar's going to be having this Meteor Strike. He has kind of a pick of the litter here without any defensive capabilities to really hold through. And what's this kind of sneaky positioning coming through from Solstice going in, That's tucking in hard left? That's not going to work out for them. Oh, uh, no, it is! Because they get the kills necessary! Unbelievable! But Nyx has taken point presence! They're going to initiate overtime, and they've traded the kills necessary. Polar, however, can equalize the playing field, as Cruz and Dad unable to really get any damage from their own ultimates, and Polar pops off! And overtime is ticking. Very difficult now for Nyx to stay in with barely anyone alive. Yeah, and that was really the exact situation that the side of Solstice needed. They needed to have that just by a little bit of time, so there was no opportunity for a second point. At this rate, it's all just going to be clean up. And as we see it tick down, it's going to be a draw. The amazing three and a half minute hold coming through from Solstice. My hat tips to you, gentlemen. Yeah, not only did Solstice do everything right on that defense, uh, I'm going to say that Nyx also kind of made it easy for them. Uh, despite what we saw on that King of the Hill matchup there, I fully expected them, especially at the speed at which they took point uh, A and B, frankly, for that matter. Uh, kind of expected that to be a relatively quick one-off adventure from them. Instead, uh, Polar and Recycled got to demonstrate that Solstice is definitely not going to be that easy to walk over. Yeah, absolutely. It seems like Nyx is good at staying on the point, but Solstice is good at keeping you off it if you're not already there. I mean, th this was kind of a very back and forth situation. And now, if I'm not mistaken, we're going to be going into the map pick and ban phase. I believe the pick will be deferred to whoever lost the last match. So I believe still on Nyx. Yes, by and large, you revert to the pick from the loser. There is going to be no map ban as ruled in the in the rules, so to speak. So Solstice, yeah, they just get the map pick. Uh, no ban from tea time. Uh, from tea time. Sorry, no <laughs> ban from the next. Uh, <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna do this. We're gonna get through this together. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're gonna be seeing a little bit of a restart coming through from tea time. A little bit of confusion there, but they just want to make sure that their processes are up and running. You know, to their maximum potential. Can't say I blame them. Some high intensity stuff going on. A lot of action here, and we're gonna be making sure. We get those names fixed this time around in the chat. We don't want you guys to be confused. And more importantly, we don't want to be giving you guys bad information. So I am personally asking it that we get this fixed. I'm sure we'll have it all resolved here in just a moment. But as we look towards the map selection, going to be Li Zhang. Interesting. Solstice interesting. Go? That is fascinating and so uh i i would actually almost have predicted this on human is going to come back in for cruzy uh sorry cruz <laughs> and uh their symmetry proficiency i don't think is going to be required on the Shang tower however uh i want to say that uh both of them have been demonstrating some serious doomfist play i can only assume that on human is going to be the one that they're going to prefer to throw onto the may as anticipated, uh, Li Zhang Tower having you know, some of the situations where the little devil herself can be used. Uh, yeah, and I think that once again, it seems like I'm going to bring this up with all of the control style maps. But as we look forward, um, it, the gardens. We're gonna we're gonna mention gardens, Ooh. and you know, Farah can definitely be a factor there because we talk about it. You know, Reaper Doomfist, not going to be able to play that effectively against a Farah. So I think that if, if you're going to be considering, you know, we want to perform best at every single situation, if you have a May Specialist who's equally as good on Farah as your Sim Specialist, maybe, uh, then I think you're going to be feeling pretty pretty all right about it, uh, putting them in rather than the Sim. I mean, the Sim's great at breaking barriers, but Farah just kind of, you know, maneuvers around them anyway. Yes, absolutely, and Li Zhang Tower has a lot of opportunities to make that play happen. Well, 
it's a one in three chance to start on control tower, but it's possible based on especially how Nyx has been playing King of the Hill. We might not even see a third map. So that being said, uh, the the far the far prob probability in my uh, hopeful anticipation is going high. Uh, not a guarantee we'll see it. Farah is not 100% lock in for Li Jiang Tower. You require someone on your team who's good at it and loves it. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, it's you're pretty much locked <laughs> into your proficiencies, and I wish the best of luck to both teams. Pick Farah. <laughs> Pick Farah, indeed. Still waiting to get some lobby stuff set up so we can make sure everything's all squared away. No production issues here. Nope, we are one of the best NA casts, and we, we give NA production a good name. Not NA casters, maybe, but we definitely give NA production a good name. Oh, hey, come on. <laughs> rush it in. If anyone's going to toot my own horn, it's going to be me. But we need you guys to toot the players' horns. Not that way. Uh, just <laughs> scroll down below the stream, pick your favorite player in the MVP poll as I make as much ambient noise as possible, because it is go time for these people. They are putting their plays on the line for you to love. So make sure you vote for your favorite. Yeah, absolutely. And as we talk about our favorites, my favorite, Garden, is going to be coming out first here. And, you know, we have about 30 seconds before we see any heroes pop onto the field. I'm anticipating Farah 3. What are your thoughts? I'm going to go with no Farah this time around because I went with it on Nepal and I was proven <laughs> so disastrously, jebatedly wrong. And I realized that it was the opposite of what I said I wanted. So I'm going to uh, go with, I'd actually prefer it if we don't see Farah on this particular round of Lijiang Tower in the hopes that it's probably going to be Sombra. Um, another <laughs> popular pick. Ah, <laughs> see, I got him. I got him. <laughs> we found, we found the winning formula here. As long as three guesses the opposite with wholeheartedness, we'll, we'll get to see what we actually want. It, it's, it's flawless logic here and human going to be hopping onto the Farah for the time being. Out red, I anticipate, going to be on that Lucio for the speed boost, switching on to the Mercy to give that glorious pharmacy synergy. And, you know, we're going to be seeing from the other side, Recycled and Polar, once again, Reaper, Doomfist, not changing up too much of their formula there. Polar almost gave me a heart attack switching onto that Toblerone, but instead it's going to be <laughs> tea time coming out on Widowmaker and on Human on the Farah. Waltham, easily, on no exaggeration whatsoever, best day ever. Yeah, this is, this is very good. I love seeing comps kind of go against each other. Polar taking an early hit by the anti day, not a good lead in. Yeah, on Human with the rockets going crazy, and tea time starts the popping off. Gets recycled, a little edgy mask right square between the eyes. They go down. Out red, of course, the pharmacy duo. They've got that res ready to go, and tea time has unrestricted access to the flank of Solstice, who is just going to be having a great time here. Uh, Polar comes in and dodges right through and is going to take on this Widowmaker right there up in the front of the face. Meanwhile, Nyx, of course, fighting right on the floor. Yeah, and Polar trying so hard to go for D-Time on that Widow. Not able to find it, however, and even playing these windows to a very crafty degree. Gotta give them credit. They know how to play around with their geometry. No real tide turning going here as both support ults kind of get activated in sync. Why am I not surprised that Anhuman already had a barrage to bear? But unfortunately for Nyx, it doesn't look like that's going to get the kills necessary to really take the point. They're starting to push them in, but uh, Solstice is in a very good position, and they're the ones, actually, who push Nyx off the point. Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, tea time bringing this Widow, not necessarily the worst call, but it's going to be very difficult to play against, uh, or into shields, rather. It's going to be hard to find those headshots and find those weak targets if they're going to be so barriered up as opposed to if you just have, you know, something like a Roadhog or a D.Va that can't keep a stationary barrier up. So now this is the interesting part that happens when you have a Farah. Sigma either commits the shield and takes damage to it, or the Farah gets ult charge. And it looks like the team is actually going to have to spread themselves out to just try and dodge around this. But that's not going to stop on Human from finding the angles necessary. And it's going to split the team as this engagement begins. Antinid goes into the field. It's going to result in a lot of damage, but no kills yet. Polar going deep into the line. A recycle starts it off, and a barriers is going to open this fight up as on Human gets a back cap. Yeah, gonna be the nice back cap, but it doesn't seem like the side of Solstice gonna be too bothered by that as now they're coming in to take possession back. And this time it's not gonna be Nyx getting a lot of 
point present as the kill is starting to come through from Solstice. Solstice have uh, kind of shaken up this King of the Hill formula that we thought we had locked down here. And they are they, they are fighting fantastically with their space making abilities. And I'm really digging what's coming out from Recycler. He kind of got the short end of the stick against that McCree pick. As, so there it is. Tea time is going to be switching back to McCree. And that flashbang is going to get to use as now the Supercharger Bomb goes comes down. Yeah, and the grab flux coming in as well. The Reaper oh, 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 and the Doomfist oh, oh. both hopping in there to follow up with the damage. That's exactly what's going to happen. Yeah, Polar's... Ah, oh, jeez. What a fantastic combination. I love that, how the Signals and the Doomfists are starting to line it up there. Yeah, absolutely. And Solstice, perhaps just needing a little bit of time to warm up, because they're certainly seeming a lot better than the first control map we saw them in. And right now, this might be the ticket. And Human trying to get some purchase has still not used that Rocket Barrage for what feels like the last couple of minutes. Tea Time, once again, going to be switching, but this time onto the Reaper, perhaps trying to get in their face while their far takes to the sky. I can only assume this is going to start with the barrage pick because Dad Please has been completely separated from the team. One barrier per fight means that they've got to be doing something. The barrage comes in, but it's still been a trade left and right. Tea Time finds the kill to start to tip the scales, and the res comes in that's going to even it up in favor of Nyx just a little bit more. And this might be the point to take what they finally needed, and just in time too, because Solstice, they've taken that right to 99, and they have the ults to back it up. Yeah, an important factor here is that Nyx's tea time really kind of forced out Recycled, made them push back. Recycled not going to be able to use that Death Blossom. Right after the Sigma Flux came in, it was a Reaper v. Reaper duel. And we saw Recycled have to back into the housing here, meaning the rest of the team of Nyx could just push in without having to worry about that Reaper threat. It's a good spot you like to be in. You like to see that kind of application, of course, being applied properly. Yep, and so Valid and Recycled and Majink all have their ultimates ready to go. They're going to lead with the damage-boosting bongos, and that's going to be Polar ripping in there, finding tea time. Recycled wow. teleports into the back line and gets the 3k, and that's a team wipe. That's exactly what you like to see if you're on the side of Solstice. Team wipe coming through from Nyx, or onto Nyx. Not going to quite be enough as the first map going to Solstice. And Nyx win a map's supply of Ripperoni, the San Francisco Rip. As, uh, wow, Solstice. Um, I, yeah, so warm-ups. Now that the warm-up maps are done, uh, you've gone from a loss to a draw, and now you're on match point for this particular situation. However, a pause has been requested from EF on Nyx's side as we get ready to go into the Night Market map. Now, Waltham, Night Market is another Farah festival, but do we think... We're going to see it, given how it may not necessarily have led to what I would refer to as victory on the last one. Uh, I think it'd be a little bit foolish for the side of the next to run it. If they weren't able to find optimal value with that Farah in a map that has, you know, a lot of concussive potential and has a lot of areas that are very tight, you're going to perhaps find even less value when the point is larger. You're not as able to land as much splash damage. Um, you can't really play angles around the point either with that Farah. So I, I think that if Anhuman sticks to that Doomfist, it's probably going to find a little bit better purchase than otherwise. That being said, we've seen some people play some suboptimal picks and find some pretty successful value with them. Uh, uh, that's a shout out to the Torb team. Uh, but that being said, who knows? I, I do think Anhuman staying on this Doomfist is going to be the right call. But it's just going to come down to how Nyx feel, what they practiced, and how they're going to play it. Couldn't have put it better myself. I'm looking forward to see if Tea Time flexes onto the McCree for a lot longer this time around. Night Market is a map where you can actually get a lot of good use out of McCree. There's a lot of places for him to hide with his relatively lower mobility, but very seriously damaging about uh, Peacekeeper. It's... Especially given how utterly potent Recycled and Polar were at flanking Nyx in that last round. This, I think, is going to be a new way that Nyx is... Well, if Nyx can't deal with it, then uh, Solstice is going to continue to flank the ever-loving bejesus out of them, and this is going to be a 2-0 going to them. Otherwise, we are going to see Control Center, which, as we noted, uh, might not even occur. Yeah, and I would be very curious to see what the instance is if we do go to Control Center or Command Center, but... Not necessarily trying to get ahead of myself here. Going to be watching to see what shakes down right around here. It looks like Anne Human going to be on that Doomfist. Not going to be leading with the Farah. And interesting enough, Valid and Paz going to be doing the Lucio swap once again. Just to get to point a little bit faster. 
as we see the teams kind of come to a head here. It's an interesting swap, and I like it. They're actually taking advantage of the fact that Lucio's cooldown's reset, but that's not gonna matter, because Tea Time's gonna find Majink so early into that fight, thanks to a halt from EMF. And now Nyx is showing their customary point-taking ability. Raid going fist-to-fist -fist with Polar, taking him down. Recycled actually takes a dive, and wow, that's the Nyx we thought we saw on Nepal. Yeah, and Recycled actually trying to go for a very deep dive into the back lines of Nyx, but Nyx had already rotated by the time the Reaper teleport was complete, meaning he wasn't able to quite tuck into their flanks and just absolutely beanbag them from the side. It's just a little bit of poor timing from Recycled, maybe a little bit of poor enemy anticipation here, but they're going to give it another go. So a Polar and a Reaper, a Polar and a Tea Time down, that is. On Human finds Paz, and that's the trade you want. But it's still trades left and right. And Solstice have actually completely defanged Nyx at this point. But it looks like the tanks and the healers can finish up the rest of the job. Uh, speaking of DPS Moiras, <laughs> that's going to be Solstice repelled once again. Yeah, they may have pulled the teeth, but nobody tell Nyx that as they continue to push so far forward. And now a couple ults coming online for the team in blue. They're going to be having the grab flux. They're going to be having the coalescence. And the Meteor Strike, no sound barrier to counter either the Grav or the Meteor Strike. Valid still quite a ways away. Paz, however, going to have the Coalescence. Not going to be good at handling that burst damage, but will be good for the mid fight. So it looks like Recycled keeps going for these flanks, and so far it hasn't worked out, except now it's given Polar the chance, as Tea Time is a bit distracted, to go ham-fisted into the line of Nyx. That's going to be a truckload of kills. Two, to be exact, and the fight is in full force with Nyx starting to even it up, but Polar cannot be denied, denied finding raid, and that's a big healer down. Tea Time, however, grabs two more before Recycled finishes them off with the Death Blossom. It's still trade back and forth, and at this point, it's difficult to say who's going to take it, but it's for certain Nyx continues to build percentage. Oh, and, and Human actually gets accretioned while trying to go for the Meteor Strike. Not going to drain his Meteor Strike charge, though. Was so close to getting it off. And now it's looking like Nyx still going to get some reinforcements in here. They're going to continue to do the Nyx stall that they are so familiar for. Yeah, they get it to 92%. That is definitively one fight territory. They're going to have four ults for the next fight to throw in to Solstice's four ults for the next fight. Now, Solstice is probably going to have to spend some of those to keep this game, al this round alive, that is. And I think they'll be up to the test. Yeah, absolutely. Outred needs to get a little bit more healing in because they will have to go up against Bron Mercy, Bronze Mercy's Grav Flux. Again, that's not an ult you want to get caught off guard with, especially in these small areas where it's so easy to just kind of get pushed upon. Tea Time looking like they're going to swing wide, trying to break off from the team a little bit here as they go cliffside. We'll see if their flank finds any anything. And nobody's else. found them yet as the laser beams come ripping out there. Tea Time is in the back lane. He goes for the death blossom. He gets three. He gets, no, it's not four. EMF destroys their Arisa counterpart. Part. That was the flank you needed. The big fist comes down, but Raid has the laser beams ready to lock it up. It's seven more seconds until Solstice have to be forced to the command center map. Yeah, and Solstice not looking like they're going to quite be able to get a contest. One second. Nope. Valid trying their best. Just cannot make it there in time as that Lucio. And so unfortunate. Valid had that sound barrier. Maybe you get a little bit more time to stall. Either way, it was going to look grim as soon as... They lost that last team fight, but now we're at one to one. Nick's going to be wanting to keep the board free from any points on the side of Solstice and Solstice just looking to make a name on that board. Yeah, draws do not bring home bacons, as uh, literally no one says ever. So with that being said, <laughs> this is the port of the story where I thought I would be seeing some May play, and I don't think that's the case. It looks like both teams are comfy with the uh, co compositions that they've been running. Yeah, and it makes a little bit of sense here. With May, you really wanted to try to get that bypass. As well, we saw her used very commonly where you would just use it to deflect hooks or, you know, try to prevent lines of sight from massive cooldowns. But as we've mentioned, Reaper and Doomfist both good at kind of bypassing barriers. And sometimes that kind of even includes walls. Yep, speaking of bypassing walls, that's exactly what Doomfists do if the walls are actually up. And Bronze Mercy says on Huma, no, you're not getting past my barrier today. And he takes them down, and that's going to start this fight off. And yeah, Solstice, they're just going to snowball that into every kill they need to start this fight off the right way. Yeah, absolutely. Solstice is going to want to absolutely take this point as quick as possible, because we know that if Nyx is able to get on point, they are not going to feel comfortable getting off. And fortunately, for the side of Nyx, not a lot of ult charge being built up, so they're not going to have to fight at a severe disadvantage. Might have to go up against the Coalescence, though, uh, from the side of Paz. And no, that's not the most game-changing ultimate, but it can be pretty crucial at times.
Yep, and Raid is of course going to be building up exactly as quickly, and on Human, are, that's revenge time, grabs Brown Mercy right into the middle of the fight. The dueling coalescences are out, and Polar is getting focused down very quickly. They're also going to fall. It's a duel now between Dad, Please, and Recycled, and it looks like they're going to get a little help from the friends. Majink also almost getting forced down. They're going to make it out just long enough to take a little bit more of that percentage, as we're looking at a pretty similar situation that we had on Nepal in that first round. Yeah, and the, the stall continuing to try to come out from the side of Solstice. I gotta admire this, especially with a couple kills coming in their favor as well. Polar using the Meteor Strike just to try to buy some time, make the, the side of Nyx a little bit wary. And right now we're seeing about 15% in total be bought and the <laughs> recycled trying to race in. Not gonna be fighting it though, as both DPS and the Sigma are gonna be having ults up for this next fight in Nyx. And so close for them getting the stagger on the Valid. Not gonna quite be working out for them though. That would have been super tasty for them to grab. Instead, it's going to be a 6v6 fight. Though, as they go into this choke here, Majinx only got the bongos, and Bronze Mercy Recycle might be a little too far away if Nyx start to preempt them with the ults, and they do. Seismic, uh, <laughs> Seismic Slam. The Meteor Slam comes in. It grabs nothing, but it gets them some shields, and that is not going to be enough for Tea Time. However, they get focused down thanks to that big bongo coming out, and the sight line for that is huge going into the point. Yeah, I like imagining that Recycled just saw Tea Time and is like, well, this guy doesn't have shields, I'll just shoot him instead. And that's absolutely what they go for. Recycled getting lifted in the air as they get that Death Blossom. Does not look like it will quite be enough for Nyx, as they're going to be on the back foot a little bit. Yeah, this is a little disgusting. Uh, Solstice take that point back well, almost effortlessly. They even keep a couple ults in the bank. Uh, it's 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 always kind of rough to see a signal ult go right into the barriers. You know exactly how that one's going to play out. And so now Nyx, despite building up a little bit of an ult bank here, they need to start making a play for this point because they're getting very close to one fight territory. Yeah, absolutely. Nick's going to be having maybe two fights at best, but the Sigma Grab Flux is going to be holding a lot of people in place. Reaper Death Blossom from t are going to be finding a massive amount of value. I'm sorry, I would have gone nuts over that, but I actually just had a heart attack because Tea Time shadow stepping into the back there was just flawless. And despite Arisa's fortification going in there, they, they get the kills and EMF was there with a the, the follow-up. Now, this is going to be tricky. It's no ults for Solstice. They have a lot of time to do this, and if they get a nice dry push here, they can really prep themselves for a one-fight retake. Yeah, an eco push is exactly what they're going for here, and they're actually going to get some kills out of it. Bronze Mercy taking down tea time. Reapers and Sigmas just mix like oil and water, it seems, right now. And, you know, surprisingly, despite having the ult disadvantage, Solstice coming through with the kills. Did someone say dry push? What I thought I heard was winning push. Solstice go absolutely ham with Bronze Mercy leading the charge, picking up the, not only the bongos, the all-powerful ultimate, keeping them from walking in, then grabs three more. So now it's... Full stall coming out from Nyx, who have EMF on the Hammond to try and do some of that whirly whirly dervish. And that's going to be a Reinhardt coming out from, and a pin from Dad Please, who just made my day. That's three Reinhardt pin kills we've seen in one match tonight, Sir Waltham. I'm happy to say it, but I'm unhappy to say it for Nyx, that is. This might be it for them if they don't block up more. Yeah, absolutely, and Solstice did a good job getting that flip early, because as we see, Nyx continuing to hold the point. The grab coming out, they need to deal with this wrecking ball, and that's gonna do it. Bronze Mercy ripping and tearing as this Sigma, as tea time falls down, Dad getting knocked back, not able to get onto point. And with that, Solstice now maybe starting to turn the tides a little bit here. That's gonna be a one to one. Mark it up on the board, it's one off for both teams. Solstice, they got teeth, they're striking back, and they struck back on the exact same map type that they just lost. Now, if that's not a clap back, I don't know what is. Yeah, both teams looking very even as we're kind of starting to see here. And it wasn't even that big of a wipe from Solstice. It did go pretty hairy there for a little bit. They did drop one sub map, but in the end, they're going to clench it away. I think Solstice is going to be feeling pretty good about that. I anticipate we might see some swap outs coming in as it looks like there was a member from Solstice who seems to have stepped out of lobby for a moment. I mean, as intense as that match was, I can understand why they might need a breather, you know? <laughs> uh, it looks like they... Well, there is a sub ready to go. Nope, recycled. Looks like they're just grabbing a little bit of the old restart there. They're back in, and now we're back to the map ban and pick phase, which means we're going to be seeing Nyx with the pick after Solstice grab the ban. Now, we did just play a control map, so Nyx may not select a King of the Hill type map to play with. Solstice, however, the bans are pretty much uh, free reign. Hanamura has been banned, Temple of Anubis also gone. So, and I'm curious what they're gonna be uh, selecting here. Yeah, I I think that Voskaya, we might not be the most likely to see it. We still have at least two more maps to go. 
and the band is actually going to be on Dorado here. Maybe, uh, I'm surprised. Solstice seemed to be, uh, coordinating pretty well against Farah's. I would think that they'd want to keep playing maps that kind of have a little bit of Farah friendliness to them. Either way, we're going to be seeing it get knocked out here. Nyx trying to pick Busan, perhaps not going to go out well for them as we did just play a control map type. So, Rip, you're going to have to select something else to uh, flex your... The trip to Korea is going to have to wait. Meanwhile, I'm curious, maybe, maybe Solstice banned the one of the two escort maps that were in the pool because they'd really like to play Watchpoint Gibraltar. It's definitely possible. Uh, we've seen that before, and since the escort map pool selection is down to a single map... I don't know. Again, that's not necessarily a, a far a playground, but it's definitely a possibility. Yeah, worth noting as well that all three of our hybrid maps are still on the table here. So that is Eichenfall, Hollywood, and King's Row. So, you know, definitely some options there. And it looks like they're going to exactly go with that. Nyx choosing to go with King's Row. Speaking of Faro Playgrounds uh, and the angles you can possibly take, it's an interesting one, and I actually don't think we are going to be seeing the Faro here. King's Row, especially on the defense on point A, we've actually been seeing a pretty solid composition come out pretty much 100% of the time. You have the Sigma up on that high ground directly across from the statue, and then you have the Orisa down on the point to contest. It gets busted up pretty easily, so I can't wait to see teams uh, reinvent that wheel, so to speak. Solstice is going to be selecting their map side to start with, and as expected, possibly, they are going to be switching over to the defense. Yes, that will, of course, mean that Solstice going to be in the blue. Hopefully we'll get those names swapped around this time. But that being said, I can see them changing in lobby now. You have Waltham's word. They're going to be changed for you guys. But as I was saying, I'm, I'm very much so looking to see kind of what comes out of the offense here. Because I think the defense, you know, if we... I, I'm not going to be surprised so much that the defense might just be Sigma Ori, but I think how the offense plays around that, because I don't necessarily know that Sigma Ori, you know, Reaper Doomfist is the most comfortable way to play in this situation, because yes, there's, there's a very tight choke, but if you play something like Doomfist, there's not a lot of walls to punch them into once you get onto point. It's a little bit more open once you do get through that choke, and I'm not necessarily sure that their Doomfists are going to feel at home in that situation. That being said, who knows? I think that uh, these teams definitely seem to have some polished Doomfist play, so it's certainly not off the table. Yeah, Polar's, again, I can't say it enough, also because it's just kind of nice to say, Polar's been popping off like crazy. It's not to say that uh, Anhuman and Tea Time haven't been giving them a run for their money. Tea Time, especially on the Reapers, we just saw from that play of the game, has been doing fantastically. But Polar's Doomfist has been opening up these fights with exactly the kills that you need to be getting on Doomfist. And as Waltham, you mentioned it, it... There's not really a lot of that on point A for King's Row. Point B, Streets Face, absolutely. freaking oh, mm -hmm. Point C, done and done. Doomfist can definitely have a free reign to make it happen. But on point A, I definitely am curious to see what's going to be coming out. I'm still expecting the Arisa Sigma, and I'm expecting very fast point A takes. Uh, but I, I'd, I'd like to not. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, <laughs> I'm trying to think of how to phrase this here. With Nyx on attack, if they get on the point, it might be a very long point take, considering how resilient they are to just staying on the point. They they stick to that point like, I, I don't know, some very sticky substance glue. Let's just go with glue. <laughs> that, seems, that seems like the most obvious thing. No, no, but, no, yeah, I got <laughs> But Solstice, I think, can absolutely make that work in their favor. And, you know, I think that they have been finding opportunities to punish Nyx's willingness to hop onto the point. For the time being, though, on the defense, it looks like we're seeing more of the same. The Lucio Moira, Doom Reaper, Sigma Ori. Yes, and as one thing that is going to be added to this initial composition here, Tea Time is going to be dropping into the Widowmaker. Very lovely option here to get a nice little quick pick as the map starts. Uh, so far, though, it looks like Solstice is going to be setting up way far behind the point they're not going to be demonstrating any of their potential defense so the usual that i've that i've mentioned with the sigma up on the high ground it's not going to happen and that actually is going to be a tea time signal to switch over to the reaper 
Yeah, absolutely. We do still see some Farah play coming out, at least for the time being. It's going to really be on the side of Bronze Mercy to try to get those shields up, try to prevent as much damage from coming out as possible. You know on humans probably going to be playing around that hotel, so you're probably just going to want to keep your barrier hovering, you know, at a comfortable angle and an early teleport high up from tea time. Yep, and there it is. Nyx have set themselves up nicely on the point. Uh, and Human starting to rain the rockets down. Not really getting any kills here. Not a lot of direct hits to happen. Recycled has gone into the back line of Nyx to make it happen. Whoa! EMF gets caught completely out of position, and Majin is going to grab that kill. Thank you very much. But Nyx, a bit of the clap back, as not only do they find Bron Mercy, they're also going to grab Recycled, a huge source of damage. Majink is two direct hits away from death. Pause of themselves as well. And yeah, that's Nyx taking point A again pretty quickly. Not really on it. Uh, out of the uh, ordinary for King's yeah, and this is something I kind of like to mention. I think a crucial mistake there was from the side of Solstice to just give up so much space on that point very early. Having that Reaper able to just get on the point and park it, like we saw T Time try to go for a flank. I don't necessarily know that that was necessary early on, because if you just get that Reaper set up behind a bunch of shields at the very edge of the point where they'd have to push into you, that's going to be very intimidating for some tanks to do. They're not going to want to get that close and that friendly with a Reaper. And right now, Solstice getting so far back. Yeah, Solstice running for the hills in the face of this Farah as Recycled was destroyed by on Human as they weren't even looking, reloading the rocket launcher. Again, free space for Nyx to take it up here, but this is going to give Solstice a chance to stabilize. Though, uh, Tea Time, I think, is going to be dropping down right into that backline, having a problem with the barrage, comes in, grabs one, grabs two, and that's exactly how many kills Solstice got in that fight. Make that three. Yeah, absolutely. Solstice looking a little bit better. They're going to be switching Recycled onto the McCree, taking down on Human, and... <laughs> Outred going to be seeming to play that smart maneuver of not going for the res. Yeah, that's now that's the Solstice defense that we know and love. They're even going to get a little bit of a stagger here onto Raid, which is clutch. And Recycled already doing so much work, they're going to have the uh, ultimate reload ready to go. And look at Tea Time sneaking up here on the high ground. Yeah, absolutely. I, You know, we've seen this Reaper really kind of just be a character where you have to try to get as creative with him as possible. He's going to be showing himself off to be on that high ground a little bit early, but he might he's going to be, in fact, be trying to take that high ground behind the side of Solstice. This might find some purchase. Yes, uh, it's going to be up to the rest of the team though, to stay alive and make the fight happen. I'm moving going down early. Not really what the doctor ordered here. Now, tea time, I think, is going to be going for some quick kills, and they're going to try and go for the barrage, but not before the high noon takes two. What is this, 2018? Uh, so that's pretty interesting. That fight was ended before it even began. Again, losing, I think, on Human early in that fight is not, not bueno. Yeah, absolutely massive. Recycled getting some kills with the High Noon. And aside from that, they're going to be switching on to the Reaper. They're going to be doing a little bit of a mirror matchup. So they don't even mind losing the High Noon. But man, getting a kill with High Noon, getting some Ryan pins. These are some abilities we just don't see come up as often anymore. And they're finding some good value. <laughs> Speaking of good value, that's the opposite of what T-Time got for their Death Blossom. The Sigmal comes out from Bronze Mercy, and that's going to get coordinated with Polar. And Solstice's defense is nothing short of ironclad flawless, no holes, it is perfect. And with on human having switched onto the Doomfist, Recycled and, uh, or rather, Recycled and Polar are free to play the ground game as they wish, and they're dominating. Yeah, absolutely. Looking so far so good for Solstice. They really want to try to maintain this. I'm not seeing Recycled be as willing to take as many flanks, but maybe he's kind of there to be an enforcer, prevent that Reaper from getting in at their back line. Because the Reaper with healing, probably going to do better than the Reaper without. And that's exactly what's trying to happen right now. As the Reaper hops on the sports, he reacts. Yeah, and Human has tried to take up and combo with tea time in the back line here we are seeing some actual cart progress here the meter strike comes out from on human that is not going to find anyone the same as you can be said for the ultimate coming out here but pause is going to start throwing out the laser beam. that's at least going to keep the teams up and scared as the bongos now come out from both sides yeah, absolutely. Bongo's going to be coming out, giving everybody that damage amplification. However, it's looking like it's favoring the offense now as both or as many members of the defensive team going to be dropping. Tea time not quite able to leverage that Reaper power. And it's going to be a little bit of stall coming in from Solstice's pass, but it's still going to be just under two minutes to push the cart for Nyx. It's nice to see Nyx come alive here, but Solstice giving up that ground, I think when they had a solid defense to hold, 
uh, like you said, Waltham, when the recycle of not taking those angles, those same angles that tea time was, I think that's starting to wear on the back line of Solstice as they keep getting broken and brokener and ner 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 into these fights. Yeah, absolutely. And Streets Fae is going to be very hard to play against the Reapers. There's just so many alleyways to maneuver and a lot of ult combos coming through here, but it's seeming to favor the offense. Yes, the sound barriers again, countering the Sigma ult perfectly, so no kills there. And instead, Nyx is going crazy, recycled for one of the first times, actually throws their own Death Blossom to no kills whatsoever. And it's a full team wipe, rather almost a full team wipe, as there's still one little polar left alive. But that's still plenty of progress for Nyx, who are now rolling into the final stretch. Yeah, and this is where Solstice has to try to make a stand, at least by as much time off the cart, because two and a half minutes is quite a bit of time. We're seeing Recycle try to lean into the back to pounce, trying to get Polar, just not going to pan out, though. Another backline Death Blossom from Tea Time, another slew of kills from Solstice, who have decided to just say, you know what, Tea Time? Fine, you can have as many kills as you want in the backline. We're going to murder the rest of the team while you're busy back there. Then we'll come home and clean you up, and the spawn advantage favoring Solstice as it is, fantastic for the yeah, and that's kind of the best of a bad situation you can get if you're Solstice. This cart big in this position, it's very advantageous for the defense because there's such a long walk back for the offense. That walk back, not only does it burn more time off the clock, but it gives the uh, defending team a little bit of chance to scout you and you don't necessarily want to have your stats or strats be seen early on. Yep, and now the fight is going to be coming along the corner. Seal shields are in place, and we're going to see the poops start to come out with a meteor strike being opened up with Polar. The halt comes in. It is not going to result in any kills. I love that strategy. But this time, with now Sticks getting a little bit pressed back on their heel shield, Majink taking a very forward stance as both uh, Moiras, again, ripping out the laser beams. And it's going to be trades back and forth, but I'd rather not have lost EMF in that particular situation. No, Nick seemingly making the best of a bad situation as Ann Hooman finally finds their fist once again. Yeah, it's, it's once again one of those instances where a team gets too carried away in killing one member that they let the rest of the team kind of collapse. And that's not what you want to be having happen there. Paz is going to be trying to stall out while the rest of the team gets cozy. Recycled Death Blossoming not going to be finding more than a kill though. Yeah, good use of the shielding coming off of Dad, please, but it's actually going to result in their death as Majing finds them. They are going to go down pretty quickly, and now the kills are going to start favoring Nyx, but the spawns are going to be favoring Solstice. As the cart sits 1.75 meters away, Tea Time throws out the big Death Blossom. That's going to be enough to push it all the way home, if it weren't for Majing coming out with the Hammond. Yeah, the Hammond going to be coming in. It is just the three members of the side of uh, Nyx coming in, trying to clear the point up, and this is kind of where they specialized here. The sound barrier coming out, kills now coming in favor for them, and the grab coming in just to get the defense off the point. It's gonna do it for just long enough to get that cart move that one meter. Whew. The Sigma-9 is one of my new favorite plays ever. When the cart just needs to go a little further, what better to do? Doesn't matter if you have the sound barriers, just lift the entire dang team off of it. And it pulls them just out of range to be contesting. Wham bam, thank you ma'am. Let's move on to the next round. And look at that, Nyx actually finished that with time on the clock. Yeah, that is not a great situation for Solstice. If you were them, you think they'd want to kind of burn that into overtime. Obviously, they tried to do the best they could. We even saw Polar on the May a little bit there, I believe. Got knocked into the wall by the Doomfist <laughs> out of the gates. So not really the opportunity to do uh, that. But we're looking forward and, you know, it's not a bad pace. It's certainly doable. This is not the most unrealistic goal we've seen even tonight. 100% true, and while we are going to be stopping here for a brief, brief, little breather, we want to remind you all that the Twitch MVP poll is just below the stream here. We've been seeing a lot of players pop off. The match isn't over yet, but if you found someone you're already ready to support, don't forget to click their name in the little box there and let your vote be counted. Yeah, very much so. We want to show the players some love. We know that you guys got a bunch of it for them, so ready to let them know who you think is popping off, but you gotta let us know for us to let them know. So with that being said, we're gonna be hopping on to now the uh, Solstice attacking phase, and it looks a little bit like a bit of the same here. The Doomfist uh, Reaper, excuse me, coming in from what I imagine to be both sides, Recycle might just be hopping onto that Hanzo to get a little bit of scouting with that Sonar Arrow for the time. 
Yep, and there it is. They have the entire composition known to them. To the shock of uh, Solstice, it is going to be the mirror comp that they are running. And wow, Recycled going to be taking the high ground, and Polar also going to be trying a bit of the flank action, but instead they're just going to be coming right in the front door, and they copy Nixel. Rather, they're taking a leaf out of Nixel's book. They go straight for the point. They're taking as much space as possible, but Anhuman actually going to be taking advantage of Recycle's extension to grab a little bit of the old murder there. And Nix getting focused down quite a bit here. Anhuman dropping dangerously low, but Raid able to prop them back up. And the fight is in full force on the point, and any kill from the offense is huge, and that's going to be tea time going down. Yeah, and I don't want to say I was right, but it, this fight is not exactly going as aggressively in favor of Solstice, and I genuinely believe that's because Recycled went down early. In fact, as we see Recycled come back, getting the triple kill on the kill feed right now, that Reaper, once you get him planted, is so good, and if you're on the side of Nyx, you cannot let that happen. Yeah, roughly about the same pace as uh, Nyx's take. Five and a half minutes for point, uh, for the, rather the point B until the next time edition. And again, that's what you expect. I have a feeling this is going to go about the same for King's Row forever ad nauseum until teams find a better way to defend it. Until then, we're looking at the B phase and Nyx has given up uh, quite a bit of space because now they have to wait for those kills, which were staggered quite nicely by Solstice. Yeah, I mean, not a bad stagger indeed. And now they're going to be trying to play this three phase. This is where they kind of have to try to really keep pace because there wasn't a worse time coming through from Nyx. Uh, did someone say you recycled in the back line? Yes, that's right. Recycled is in the back line. He's hunting for you, but instead, while he's in the back line, Nick's taking a leaf out of Solstice's book. We don't care if a Reaper's in the back line. We're going to take the fight to your front line. We're going to kill your tanks. We're going to kill Recycled too, and then we're going to stuff you back in your spot. Yeah, these teams seem very oh, willing to play a Reaper in the back line only when they're on offense. Otherwise, they kind of want to keep that Reaper tucked in, prevent the supports from taking too much damage, impose a little bit onto the attacking Reaper. And right now, it seems like it's been paying off a little bit more for the side of Nyx as there's a cart at choke, but a lot of ults coming online for Solstice might change. Yeah, the laser beams are going to be coming out, but that's going to be one of the last ults that Nyx can match, especially with EMF going down right before they get their own supercharger. And Solstice may not even need to commit anything left to this fight. They seem to be doing, doing just fine. Thank you very much. Tea time goes down. Recycle does commit the Death Blossom just to finish off that pesky Moira. And Anhuman goes down to a chrome-domed fist from Majin. You know, honestly, at this point, I don't blame Solstice for investing ults just to get Nyx off the point. Nyx has been showing to be one of the stickiest teams we've seen in this tournament so far. And right now, you'll do anything you can to get the cart moving as forward as possible. And they still have a lot of ults in their bank. So overall, I don't think you can necessarily fault you too much. Yes, and now they're coming into the last big fight for point B. The big ult goes in from Brown's Mercy on the Sigma. The Barriers comes in to counter it perfectly. Tea time gets stunned out of his Death Blossom. No kills for them, and now the big bomb goes coming out from both Orisas. It's going to be who, who can kill who faster. And Dad Police has grabbed her cycle, so that's going to be a little bit of skin off the teeth of Solstice as the rest of Nyx goes ripping in, and that is going to be forcing them away. But they come away with more ults than you'd think. The pullback coming through from Solstice is going to be swift there in that situation. And they try to take a position where they can't exactly get spawn pushed too aggressively. They're going to have to be working again with a push through the choke. <laughs> At least it would be the case if the side of Nyx didn't pull back. We're seeing Outred kind of standing on the cart, making sure no Reaper back caps happen. And we're going to be spotting out Recycled. He's trying to take a little bit of a wide route here. So that Reaper not going to exactly be catching people off guard in this situation as we see Dad turn around and put the shield up right next. And Recycled has once again gone into the back line as the dueling Moira's once again throwing those lasers, crossing the streams. And it's looking pretty spicy for Polar. And no, they're not going to get out of that flank alive. But Bronze Mercy finds Anhum and Recycled goes down. If we're following the script, that means Tea Time's going to be the next one to go, except it's the signal loaded into the barriers. No state change whatsoever, though Solstice is going to be forced back here as all of their ammunition for that fight has been expended, so to speak. Yeah, that was an expensive fight to lose if you're on the side of Solstice. You still have to go up against two DPS ults in the next fight, assuming that Nyx feels the need to use them. If not, then you're still going to be having that giant question mark of when do we use it. Right now, I think a large part of this is that Recycle has just been getting played around so well, he has not been found out, or he has not been able to be unfound out. 
Speaking of when to use the ultimate, Tea Time has decided that it's always Tea Time. They go right into the backline once again. It seems to be one of the best ways for a Reaper to survive in that particular situation. And remember, they're getting health back from every one of those Death Blossom shots. Very difficult to upset them, stunning them out of it, as we saw earlier. One of the best ways. For now, Solstice again retreating, and yeah, committing one ult. Now both Moiras are going to be very close to their laser beams. Raid going to grab that first. Probably going to fire it off as soon as they can. Yeah, you would have to expect that, especially as that Doomfist and the Reaper kind of get dive in and, and get snuggled up within one another. It's really going to be crucial that that Moira ult comes in, heals everybody, as well as a little bit of damage, but burst damage don't matter anything to Polar. <laughs> because it doesn't matter if you have a Coalescence trained on T-Time or not. Doomfist's fist is quite destructive, and wow, Polar grabs three. The rest of the team going to find the rest of the team. And Solstice, with a minute to spare, it's going to have maybe one more fight for point B. That is absolutely wow. what we needed to see come out of Solstice, and they're looking pretty confident. They want to carry this without a fight. Majink's going to be dropping that beacon or that damage amplification bongo just to try to get a little bit more progress, and they're going to get it. They're not going to even get contested, but now Nyx knows they don't have that uh, amplification. <laughs> Recycled goes into the back line. Both Doom Fists find both Reapers. It's tea time recycled, and wow, this would be one of the first Sigma ults to go in without the barriers, and it results in great kills. Bronze Mercy goes down. Nyx cleans up immediately. Um, um, I know the bongos was probably dropped as a deterrent, but if I'm Solstice, man, I want that back. Yeah, you might want it back just a little bit, and man, Valid not having that sound barrier, as you mentioned it, so crucial, you can't get caught out in that situation. However, now both Sigma's gonna be trying to play this shield angle, hugging as tight to this corner as possible. Well, I say that, it's actually Solstice taking a little bit of a wider angle. Yeah, with so many ultimates, I think you have the freedom to pretty much do what you want. Anhuman actually just pretty much uses their Meteor Strike as their own kind of deterrent, and that does cause Solstice to pull back a little. Now they're going to be coming right in there with their Coalescence leading the charge. Recycle trying to find the back line as Raid throws out their own dueling lasers. Tea Time is going to grab Polar, though, so it's up to Recycle to make something happen in terms of the damage, but with Majink going down, it looks like they're going to be caught well out of position having to retreat. Yeah, not going to quite be the case where Recycled's able to make anything happen. Did not seem to want to drop down in that situation. Don't know if it's just a uh, understanding of a lost fight or if they just were not feeling confident in themselves to find those kills. But really, a little bit of hesitation from Recycled and you didn't get killed, but maybe you come through with some kills of your own a little bit closer to your death blossom if you do take that fight. Yeah, now it's going to be once again the signal going into Outred's barriers, who had the matchup this time. Polar goes down with the meter strike. That's not going to get anything but them killed. And this is not good for Solstice, despite clapping back on EMF. That's going to be replaced very quickly. And with 25 seconds left, as stagger kills continue to come in, if Valid goes down here, that's massive. They're going to have a tough time getting back to the cart with any kind of fight to fight. Yeah, they absolutely are. Somebody's gonna have to get on a point, and you're not gonna want to do that against a Reaper who has Death Blossom. He just pops on the point, and if you don't have anything to stun him out of it, you're gonna be taking a lot of damage. He's gonna be healing a lot of damage, and it's gonna be so difficult. But right now, I think they might actually be <laughs> the two of us run into each other. As we're seeing it here, the fight is breaking out. And Human has the Meteor Strike, not going to be popping it off, though, as Raid coming in with the Coalescence just to keep everybody up. Kills are going back and forth, but they seem to, of course, be favoring the defense as they have that slight respawn advantage. And a nice haul coming in. Recycle is going to be Death Blossoming right into it. Helps take down Dad, please. Yes. So that is going to be Solstice with their overtime push here. Both teams are going to get time on the clock here. Oh, what a nasty stagger. Raid, fisticuffed out of it. They're going to be a little bit late to this fight. And if it's in Nyx's best interest to wait, that might just be exactly what they need to do. Yes, they're going to be coming out here right away as quickly as they possibly can. Carton moving into position. Last chance for them to win this map. Yeah, and big value from Valid. Able to spot out that Reaper played by Tea time And uh, they're gonna, not, nobody's going to be on point. Nobody's gonna yeah. be on point. It's so it comes completely by surprise. The first kill goes in on whom and pushes away Sigma and yeah. That must have been their anchor for the point because no one else was even there setting up their own attacks. That is a very unfortunate spot to be in if you're on the side of Solstice. You had a little bit of momentum, you're starting to get some swing back, but Nyx gonna kinda stop that in its tracks where it lies. So now we've entered into match point status. Nyx, one more. That's all they need. Meanwhile, Solstice in the fight for their lives, because from the loser's bracket, there is no return. You get knocked out of this one. That's it, and we'll see you on the next brawl. Now.
what do what can Solstice pick here map wise to get that edge back? Oh, Solstice here has been at an advantage when their opponents have been trying to do something besides Reaper and Doomfist. And that's a hard spot to be in because you have to somehow persuade your opponent that a better that a different comp is better. We saw it on Li Zhang when Solstice, or excuse me, when Nyx was on that Farah, it didn't look as good for them. They 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 shook a little bit. And you know, with our map pool right now, that's that's kind of a hard ask. You might want to try to kind of allude to Hollywood. You might want to you might want to go towards Hollywood or Eichenwald, because those are, you know, Hollywood has some sniper potential. Eichenwald has some Farah potential. But Volskaya, I don't anticipate we get us getting away from the Reaper Doomfist there. Busan as well. We've seen Nyx made the misplay of calling that to be their map when they, they couldn't choose it. And, you know, they, they seem like they're itching or at least comfortable to play there. And Solstice are going to bite. After Gibraltar is banned, eliminating the entirety of the escort map type from picking, uh, Solstice jump right into it. They're picking Busan. So, wow. They picked up that gauntlet for sure. That is not what I expected them to go with. I thought we were going to see Volskaya or definitely maybe, uh, or actually, I actually pretty much had to be Volskaya or Busan now that I think about it because we can't play another hybrid match. So, no, yeah, Solstice may not necessarily be thinking they can take, they rather wanted to play Nyx's pick. I think this is probably the best one for them as well. Yeah, you can still make some stuff work. And, you know, I think... There is some potential here for Solstice. I don't. I don't want to be um, the doomsayer for this team, but it's it's gonna it's gonna require some changeups. I think we're gonna have to see the Reaper play from the side of Solstice really start to pick up here because right now Recycle just does not seem to be able to find those flanks, be able to get into the backline nestled as stealthily as we've seen the side of Nyx be able to. Yeah, and Nyx, especially as we go into this Mecha Bay map, this seems like their literal home turf in terms of what does Nyx like to do? Get on the point. What, is like, what does Nyx like to do? Fight for the point and stick it out. Now, Solstice on Li Zhang Tower definitely demonstrated that same exact tenacity. There's something to be said, though, for how Nyx has been scrapping in these fights where they take the kill take a couple hits, and then they keep on ringing it out of them. That happened a lot on King's Road towards the end, where we saw, even though Recycled was in the back line doing a serious quantity of damage, Nyx was coming out on top. Yeah, absolutely. I think that the key here is, for the side of Solstice, is that they're going to have to get point, and they're not going to have to let up. They're going to have to bunker down and make sure that they maintain that, because if Nyx gets possession of it, no matter where they're at, it feels like they're going to at least get 70%. You can't let that happen. But as far as we look towards team comps, both teams going to be running kind of the same situation. Yep, they're sticking to their guns, and this is the hills that they're going to die on. Well, not quite. The map's definitely not going to end here. Both teams heading straight for the high ground as the fight goes on. Tea time teleporting into a blind spot. They're going to have access right behind those barriers. It's not going to result in any kills yet. Recycled moving into duel them. And Paz, wow, there it is. Dad, please. Yes, 360 with the kills again. Grabs Paz, grabs Recycled. EMF wins the Arisa duel. And Nyx claim dominance in this fight oh, pretty much immediately. Yeah, and that's just good understanding of Nyx. When you're up, you've got to get aggressive. You can win that fight. Sometimes you, you, you try to take fights a little bit slower, build up that ult charge for your members. But in this situation, they just crushed it so they can get the point. And you can't necessarily blame them. They're going to already be getting moving. They're going to be positioning forward to try to get that early fight in again. <laughs> the kills still go for them. It's over, Anakin. I have the high ground, etc., etc. JPEG. Raid finds Polar very early into the fight, who has been massive for Solstice and generating kills. And without them, Nyx go ham, as uh, there is no ham in the play. But, you know, you kind of get what I'm going at here. Absolutely. And <laughs> right now, Recycled, not really getting too much value on that Reaper. They were pretty much out of that fight a long portion of it. In fact, the entire back half, they really only shot at an Arisa once from like 20 meters away. It didn't really feel good. They don't seem that comfortable getting up close and personal. I think Recycled is, is perhaps the one being most capitalized upon on this team. Yes, and these, and these halt combos coming out from Nyx have just been absolutely devastating. Polar almost goes down again thanks to that Moira bubble. This time Majink is the first one to go, but Polar strike back just before the barriers come down for their team, and that's going to stop Tea Time's Blossom right in its tracks. It's Doomfist right click central. On Lumen going to start evening up a bit for Nixel. Jeez, this man is incredibly difficult to stop. 
Yeah, this Doomfist being such a burden here, he, it feels like Recycled occasionally tries to play to counter, but Anuman just able to get so much burst damage through. Really, just some good coordination from this team in general. Tea time Ooh. as soon as somebody gets lifted, Anuman there. there. Wow, that was such an early nasty kill. Raids, orbs, and the halts coming out from Arisa have just been devastating. These fights, Solstice has only gone 6v6 with Nyx maybe twice in this entire push to 100, as actually now Solstice are just getting straight for the point in order to eke out some overtime. Yeah, absolutely, and they're gonna need to. Polar using the Meteor Strike just to get, you know, something set up here, but they're just gonna get picked for their troubles. And very nice, they, at Bronze Mercy gets to throw their Sigma Ultimate right into a barrierless Nyx, who don't really have a lot to offer by way of counterplay. Their own ultimates were pretty much down. Raid is gonna commit the Coalescence to what is definitely a lost fight for Nyx, as Solstice continue to rack up the kills and Human going down. Difficult for Nyx to take this, and yeah, with EMF going down, that's all but set this down. Yeah, absolutely here, and I don't think that Nyx are necessarily going to mind too much. They they know that they just have to win one more. Again, it's one of those situations where you win one fight and you've won the game from this precedent. And Recycled going to have that Death Blossom, but I think their positioning is going to have to be pretty aggressive to get some good value out of it. But Jink also going to have the damage amplification bongo, but Outred to answer has that sound barrier. And Bronze Mercy's away from Acrobatic Slam, so they don't necessarily have to that worry about that immediately. That was my favorite push through ever! They come in right through the ground. They're not able to get anything out of the Death Blossom because the Barriers was there, ready to rock and roll, knowing that a Sigma Alt wasn't going to be forthcoming, despite how close Bronze Mercy is to it. The Doofus going crazy on the right clicks. Now Paz gets to throw their ultimate out to no competition whatsoever, except Tea Time is just the Reaper of the match right now. Yeah, right now, again, it seems like... The side of Nyx is just unlocked. They've been getting more and more aggressive, and it only seems to be paying out more for them. And on the other side, Solstice not looking so hot. As we see, the first point going to be going in favor of Nyx. I'd like to say that maybe based on how Solstice were operating on Mecha Bay, that possibly was their least favorite section of Busan. Yeah. And the way RNG Jesus, God rest them, uh, likes to play it, I can see this maybe being the start of a bit of a bounce back. In terms of positioning, Tea Time had the upper hand on Solstice almost every single fight, and the combos coming out from Raid and EMF were insane. That Moira Ball stopped three fights from happening. Yeah, absolutely. Raid, uh, I, I hear a lot. You, you don't talk about the Moira unless they're doing something wrong or, you know, they're, <laughs> they're, they're out. But in this situation, I think it's very worthy we talk about Raid because that was, you know, uh, they had to have at least built 15% ult charge just on those three orbs by themselves because of respawn. Or yeah. percent, uh, per point percentage, rather. Point percentage each ball, yeah, absolutely. Just So this is something that I want to point out. Solstice have been trying this uh, Lucio switch off with the Brigitte to get them speeded to the point without having to cost the cooldown. Nyx have been showing up first every single time, and it's been working out great for them. On Human opens with the kill onto Valid. Majink goes down next. Solstice, they're not going to have a play for what is definitely the tightest square footage in the game. Yeah, it's going to be real rough, and it's going to be even harder to retake. Again, these are such close quarters characters that a tight uh, control point is not what you necessarily want to be going up against. And another thing that is a little bit harder to notice out of the side of Solstice, they've been having a tough time comboing with the Orisa Holt. Bronze Mercy, not looking like the Accretion Rocks are quite lining up. The Doomfist right clicks, not quite getting lined up. And I tend to think that's on the Orisa for not calling if the entire team's not following up. Oh, jeez, look at that. The Halt stops Puller from coming in, and it looks like Nyx have decided that that's going to be where the focus goes, but on whom it actually goes down as well. Recycled looking much better on this particular section of Busan. They're starting to flex it quite a bit. Tea Time is going to get out of that very, very dangerous extension alive. For now, they get focused down very low. Bronze Mercy coming in with the absorption, and right now it's pretty much just even fight on the point any way could go. Yeah, but yes, 360 about to have that Gravitic Flux and no answer from the side of Valid. Don't anticipate they'll use it this fight, but it's definitely something to keep an eye out as the kills just start to come through for the side of Nyx. They're going to be having a lot of ults out red already having that sound barrier to match Bronze Mercy, unlike the other way around. 
Yes, and Valid is definitely going to also have the barriers. So I think we're going to see some Sigma Alts and some barriers get thrown right into each other. But Raid and Paz, the Moira's coming in, it might be a big six for Nyx. And Polar not having the size, the Meteor Blast, Meteor Slam, might not really be a factor. It tends to be an ult that is best with the combos, but given how Polar performs, uh, it might be safe to say it might be the ult apocalypse. Yeah, absolutely. You definitely have to be looking forward to that Ultra Apocalypse if you're a fan of big <laughs> team fights. In this instance, though, it's looking like they're going to lead with just a standard kill. Paz is going to be popping that Coalescence, though. Key time distracts the entire team, forces them away. It's 10 seconds with the Bongos on the field. Nyx is keeping. Solstice completely locked up. They have five seconds to get there. Paz is going to make a play for it. They're not going to last long. They trigger overtime, but no one's left. Yeah, you can't win the fight. You can't win the round if your team's all dead. Nick's doing some great diversion tactics there. That was some pretty wow. crucial play. And, you know, tea time, they fell for it. They, they lost the battle, but they won the war on that one. Yes, absolutely. We saw Recycle come alive there on that last section of Busan just to try and make it happen just a bit. They had so many ults going for them, but the true play of the game on this particular situation is definitely going to be Nyx's setting up of this fight, pulling Solstice so far away from the point they might as well have been on a different map. Yeah, and with the Moira, it's real tough to kind of you know, do we take that damage from the Coalescence? Because if you walk through the Coalescence, you're, you're going to take some, some ticks of damage. Otherwise, how do we kind of maneuver around it to get to point fast enough? In that instance, I feel like Solstice didn't really have an answer in either situation. However, as we move in towards the end of our game here, we are going to be having a post-match interview with, it sounds like, Dad Please Yes 360 coming in from the side of Nyx. With that being said, folks, make sure that during this interview, you're throwing your votes in the Twitch chat. Let us know who you think was popping off this game. We'll announce it after our interview. We'll let the teams know what you thought of them. And of course, as a reminder, if you love what you're seeing, if you want to see more, we've got so many gosh darn games, it's difficult to keep track of them all. That is unless you are uh, following the channel, and that way you get notifications every time we go live. Also, it's half sub September, and this is the best opportunity to, for the very, very low, 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 low half price sub cost, <laughs> you can get some sick I Hate Widow and more Torb emotes to throw into the wild chat. But enough about that. Let's start talking to this guy. And Waltham, I'm going to claim first blood here. Uh, da <sighs> I can't do I know, it. I know. I, I, quit. I know, it's perfect. <laughs> welcome, to the, welcome to the caster's booth. Congratulations on your performance on the matchup. How are you feeling right I'm, now? Uh, I'm feeling hella good right now. <laughs> I would be too. So let's, let's start here. Me and Three were, were talking back and forth about, you know, the teams, obviously, that's, it's, that's, uh, you can say it's what we do, but we noticed that Nyx, your, your team, seemed to be so sticky to the point, especially during those first few rounds of control. You guys were, were playing where it just seemed like a continual three-man fight on point. Is that something you guys kind of have a philosophy on, or is it more so, we just want to stall out as long as possible? Well, to be fair, we're kind of like a new team. Mm -hmm. So we've been kind of like just working on staying together is like our main goal lately. Okay. And so being on point is like the best way to practice that. I 100% am on board with that. Back in the day of Death Ball, one of the things that you tried to impress upon a, a group of players more than anything was stick to your blanking Reinhardt minute someone steps out from behind the shield wham bam thank you man they get ganked so can definitely appreciate that particular strategy now from uh dad yes please so uh, let's go, let's talk about you the man the myth the legend themselves how did you uh, jump into the esports scene is overwatch your first big game um yeah i think so i used to play uh on xbox over you know a little less than a year ago so I, I thought it was fun there. I played on a couple of teams on Xbox, and when I moved to PC, I just it started out rough because you know mechanics yeah. are not easy. But uh, I think I've been growing as a player, and I think I've been doing pretty well now. I'm gonna have to agree on that point. Uh, it's, as we you know come into this particular meta, Sigma has almost a 100% pick rate, so it's exciting to see how different players are flexing onto him. I'm gonna have to say that uh, Years was one of my favorite play scenes so far. 
Oh, I'm actually uh, pretty flattered, not gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Now, as I guess, you know, we're talking, we're talking more so about you here. What made you, I guess, get into, oh, I, I really, you know, don't just want to play Overwatch. I want to play, you know, team-based Overwatch where, you know, a lot of people are just content climbing the ladder or, you know, hopping into quick play. Where was your mindset at that made you say, oh, you know, team might be a pretty cool thing? Uh, I'm just like a really competitive person, <laughs> to be honest. And uh, when I started playing Overwatch, I realized that I was getting like pretty good at it. So I just kept putting more and more time into it. And I ended up thinking, well, I should just try and join a team, see how it goes. And I think, you know, scrimming and playing in tourneys is a lot more fun than comp. So I just have a lot of fun, to be honest. Uh, hearing someone actually enjoying Overwatch, uh, yeah. I, don't know, I don't really know. Even how to having to play that. Sigma as a, as a, you know, <laughs> primary Roadhog main. Ooh. Oh no, my heart goes out to you. Was Roadhog the first tank? Um, yeah, I actually used to be. I, I'm not gonna lie, I was a Lucio main probably like two months ago. Wow. Wait, so so question of clarity here: Did you go from Lucio to Roadhog to Sigma, or did you go Roadhog to Lucio to Sigma? Well, I've always played Lucio and Roadhog both. You know, I, yeah. I you know I hit pretty high playing Lucio, and then I one tricked Hog, and that was fun in the Arisa meta. You know. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Enjoy clapping cheeks as the fat pig. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, I I could certainly see why. All right, we're going to have to let you go so that we can let everyone go to bed. But one final take for you guys. This is the beginning of your tear through the lower bracket onward to victory. How do you guys like to get prepped and psyched for your matches? Uh, we just play like, you know, a, a scrim beforehand and then just kind of meme around for about an hour. <laughs> Not going to lie. Very nice. It uh, sounds like some good team bonding. I know other teams that we've talked to have things like Minecraft servers or whatever. So, you know, getting that, that interaction just maybe outside a game a little bit, not too bad. But with that, I think we are about ready to wrap it up here. Now, Dad, please, yes, before I let you go, I do have the honor <laughs> of yes. announcing the viewer's MVP and my friend. It's you. You won it. You are you are Twitch MVP for the night. <laughs> All thanks of that goes to my friends on Xbox, the Xbox gang out here <laughs> supporting me. <laughs> People out there sleeping on the consoles, but there's there's a community for them. You're there to represent them. 360. Yeah. I like it. All right. Well, thank you very much, Dad. Please, yes, 360 for coming in here, hanging out with us, and letting us giggle like immature school children at your name. <laughs> That's what I made it for. <laughs> I knew it! I knew it! Well, we hope you do well in the rest of your games throughout the tournament here. And once again, congratulations to you and your team. We hope to see you in the next coming uh, few rounds. Popping off as always. Sweet. Thank you. It was fun. <laughs> Absolutely. And with that, Threep, I think we are just about ready to wrap it up, wouldn't you say? I would agree. You've already covered me from making the embarrassing mistake <laughs> once again of forgetting the glorious MVP pick chosen by our beloved viewers. So yeah, I think that just about wraps it up. This has been the Overwatch All-Stars Brawl <laughs> number two. <and laughs> number I, number two. Number two. Number two. I have been Threepwood007. You can grab me on Twitch or Twitter and catch more of my gaffes at Threepwood007. And likewise, I've been Sir Waltham. You can catch me on Twitch or Twitter at 3 double. Wait, no, that's the other guy. You can catch me on Twitch or Twitter at Sir Waltham. And with that, we'd like to give you guys a big thank you for hanging out with us, watching a couple games, showing your support to the players. We hope to catch you tomorrow, right around the same time. I believe that is 9 p.m. Eastern, if my time zones are correct. I'm bad at time zone math. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but with that being said, once again, thank you guys for tuning in, showing the support. We hope to catch it next time for those of us at the Overwatch All-Stars Brawl. We hope you guys have a great night and stay safe out there, everyone.